finally here, everyone. The drip irrigation. <laughs> All right, I didn't think I'd ever be so excited about irrigation, but here we go. Let's figure out how to install this stuff. I got some lollipops. Thanks, Drip Depot. Super cool. All right, so there's a lot of stuff in this kit. Uh, and I've never done a drip irrigation before, so it's gonna be a struggle, but let's figure it out, guys. Looks like we've got the mainline tubing here, some raised bed tubing, uh, some in-ground bed tubing. We've got a bunch of parts, bunch, a bunch of parts. Some of these are gonna be risers. Some of these are gonna be end caps. Uh, so we'll figure it all out. So I figured it would make sense to give you guys a tour of the garden itself before. So we've got one, two, three, four raised beds here. We're gonna do the raised bed kit there. We have a raised bed here. We have a mounded garden right here. We have an in-ground bed here. And then this is gonna be a pollinator style garden raised bed right there. And so what I have is I have a hose attachment or a sprinkler head right there, 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 and there. And so I'm gonna figure out the most efficient way to hook into these uh, so that when I turn this nozzle, this faucet right here, it all gets irrigated. So let's see if we can figure it out. All right, so we're gonna to try to figure out how to convert a existing sprinkler head into a drip system. So what I have here is a cutoff riser. So you can cut this to whatever height that you want. I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. Uh, and then the next thing you need is going to be an elbow. Uh, so we're gonna put an elbow on here just to get it going in the direction that we want it to go. There we go, pretty simple. Next thing we need to know is, hey, what if, what if uh, there's backflow? And so we need a backflow preventer, which is what this is. Um, it just is, it allows water to flow through. There's a little ball in here, um, but it does not allow water to flow back. So pretty simple, screw that on. Next, we have our filter. So we need to make sure no debris gets into the drip, otherwise it can clog the drip. And so we're gonna screw this on, make sure that this is pointing downwards. There we go. Next, we have to put our pressure regulator on. So just to make sure that we don't blow the line out. I'm gonna put that on so it brings it down to 25 PSI. Finally, we've got the adapter to connect the actual mainline drip which is right here. And so you can see, it was a good thing we had the riser because we're back where we started, back at ground level, which is where we wanna be, um, but we needed this riser in order to actually get there. Just to reiterate, what we have here is water's flowing up through here, it's elbowing to the right or to your left, however you think about it. There's a backflow preventer, so nothing can flow backwards through the system. It goes through a quick filtration before it drops down, pressure is regulated, and then it goes into the mainline drip. And the way that it attaches is with this. So what I would do, is I would slide it on here and then just lock this forward, boom. And then it's done. Uh, and now I've connected my sprinkler to my future drip system. So this part's figured out, let's figure out the rest of the whole thing now. All right, everyone, as you can see, there's been a bit more work done. Uh, we had some rain here, so I had to take a quick break uh, with all my electronics. But anyways, let's get to it. So we've already talked about how to retrofit a sprinkler head. So I'm not gonna go over that again, but we've got the drip line main tubing coming straight across here, running parallel to my raised bed. Down here, I brush off the dirt. You can see I've just got a simple T connector, so that allows the main line tubing to continue running out to the left here. Got a short bit of tubing that attaches to a 90 degree elbow right here. We're running up. We've got another elbow right here. And then here is a little interesting feature that I wanted to have. And thankfully, uh, Drip Depot sent it out so I could do it. So if I, let's say this bed is growing something that needs less frequent watering than the rest of the beds in this irrigation system. Well, I can just do this, turn it this way. I've shut this bed off and everything, all the water, the water stops here and it's gonna divert back down to the main line. And so, boom, let's imagine we've turned it on. And so now we can see how this works. You've got these barbed plugs. Uh, and one side goes into the main line here. You use a hole punch to get it in. The other side attaches to here. And then here you can see these little uh, larger sections. Boom, boom, boom. These are all your drippers. Uh, and then they just run across. And on a wooden raised bed, what you'll do, you'll attach a goof, goof plug here and then just nail it in. So this seals off the water supply and this keeps it nice and straight. And so that's what I've done right here. So that's a pretty simple raised bed setup, but now let's go into what I'm doing next. So the next thing I've done is I've kept my main line running and I've gone up here. So let's go ahead and analyze this setup. This is another T. 
we're going straight up. We're doing a 90 degree elbow. We're doing a inline shutoff valve right here. But now we're going drip tape. And so here, it's the same exact idea. You're using a barb to, you're using this hole punch actually. Let me show you how this works. You're using this to make a punch. And in this one, because drip tape is a, is a wider diameter, you need to use a different part here. So this is just a different part that barbs into the main line and then converts it to this larger diameter where you run drip tape. And as you can see, this drip tape is very similar to the drip tube. It's a little emitters every, I think, 12 inches or so. Uh, and what I've done is I've done three of those and then I've just run them down here and we've done some shutoff valves or some end caps. All right, so now we're gonna see how this works. As you can see, we've got a nice drip flow coming from here, which actually looks amazing. This is a first try, guys, so pretty stoked on that. And then over here, I've shut it off right there, so we're not getting any flow. And we can see we're getting some drip pressure out of here as well. So it looks like this side of the system is fully set up. And I'm pretty stoked about that. Oh, know what? Look, we got a leak. That's what you gotta troubleshoot for. You gotta run your water, make sure you're not getting any leaks. So I'm gonna figure this out. So fixing that leak was actually just as simple as screwing this end cap down. So I need to make sure that I am wary of all that because any leaks here is just, number one, it's gonna waste water. And number two, it's gonna reduce the water pressure in the system. So very good idea to scan for all that. So we can see, I mean, there's some decent amount of water coming out. And so what I'll probably end up doing is getting a little dibbler and making my transplants right next to that. So we get a consistent supply right next to the root zone. So there are two problems before I can continue to install drip down this line here and complete the garden. Problem number one is that I broke a piece of pipe off in here, which is basically impossible to get out. So I'm gonna need to grab a new piece for that. Problem number two, which I discovered when I turned the water on, is that this pipe over here is broken. And so, there's nothing I can do to fix that with the tools that I have. Uh, I'm actually gonna need to cut this pipe here, and I might even cut it right here, and then just cap it off, because I actually don't need this pipe. Uh, now that I'm using the drip, I just need water to stop flowing out of here so I'm not losing pressure, and also just not leaking water down the street. So, off to Home Depot I go. Now, there are a couple things I would've done differently here. So the first thing I would've done differently is, these are metal beds, and the Drip Depot kit is designed to nail in so you have a header row that would be nailed right along that right there uh, so it'd be nice and straight i may actually buy some wooden boards put them right there and then nail the header row in just so i have some actual stability and i get better coverage but for now it's up and running next thing i would change is i would retrofit sprinklers because there are a couple sprinklers that are leaking right now that i need to fix um, because not all of these needed to be converted, but some of them needed to be capped. So I used all the random parts that I had to try and cap them for now. But as you can see, I'm not doing the best job just yet. There's a little bit of leaks, and then I have an open sprinkler right there. Um, so I still have to cap that off, and I still have to irrigate this bed. But in general, I think this is a pretty dang good drip setup especially if you use mulch. I mean, for me, here I am in San Diego talking about gardening in the winter in the first place. I think it's just a wonderful, wonderful setup. And I'm super grateful to Drip Depot for even sending these out to me. Okay, everyone, we have it set up and I'm gonna take you on a full tour as it's running. So this is my valve. As soon as I turn this on, I can then turn this on right here. All right. So first thing we have is that retrofitted sprinkler. So we have a riser, we have an elbow, we have a filter, we have a uh, pressure regulator, and then we have the main line as it runs down here. It's teeing up to this bed here, which is clearly working well on the drip, which looks amazing. Now let's go over here. We've got another retrofit up to this bed, that bed, that bed, and that bed. And as you can see, the pressure is making it or the water, sorry, is making it all the way over here. And I'm gonna show you how I set these ones up. So this one runs, there's a main line, it's running down like that, and then it just tees up, elbows over, with the inline shutoff valve. So let's test one of these inline shutoffs. We should get some stopping drip. There we go. 
and let's say I want to irrigate this bed again, boom, we can turn that on. All right, let's go over here. Let's look at this. This is the drip tape. And so that main line is flowing down here, coming up, I've capped it right there. And then we've got drip tape, which is quite full and it's just dripping away. Um, and so that's just perfect. What's up everyone? So there we have it. That is the drip installation. Um, again, thanks to Drip Depot for sending that out. That was super kind of them. It's a really cool kit. I mean, I have a lot of extra parts, uh, but that's because they make them pretty modular. So you can kind of do whatever you want. You can uh, make your way around some funky issues that you run into. And so with that, let's talk about some of these funky issues that I ran into. Issue number one is that I did not look at all the sprinklers on my yard first. And so after I installed everything, there were a few sprinklers that I had to cap off and they were in awkward positions. So make an accurate assessment of your yard, figure out how many sprinklers are actually sprinkling, uh, and then figure out which ones you're gonna use and which ones you're not gonna use because I have one down there and I have one right over there that I did not know were active. So I had to cap them off and uh, it was a little, little hairy getting in there. So I would definitely say that. Uh, issue number two. I would say is if you're gonna use a bed that is not uh, wood, so something you can't actually nail into, you might run into an issue that I ran into, which is the header row is a little sloppy. Um, and so what I'm gonna do to counteract that is I'm probably gonna end up drilling holes. Let me show you. I'm gonna end up drilling holes right here and then zip tying the header row to the actual head of the bed. Um, that's just a problem that I ran into. I knew it was gonna happen. Right now I'm just supplementing with bricks, but fortunately, if I need to recut these drip lines, uh, I have plenty of material to do that. But, you know, would have been nice if I just didn't have to deal with that in the first place, right? Issue number three is to figure out your water pressure. So if you have too much pressure, you're gonna blow the lines out. So these drip tapes here, these can only handle about 25 PSI. Uh, and so if you have more than that, these, these blow up, so they go like this um, when they fill up with water. And if there's more than that, you're gonna blow out your line. Unfortunately, I didn't have to deal with that, um, probably because there's a couple of leaks in the system that's relieving some of that pressure. But Drip Depot actually sends out pressure regulators, which are great, so it'll regulate the line to 25 PSI, which is exactly what you need. Um, but if you don't have those, you're trying to DIY it, you just have to make sure that you, you don't blow a line up because drip stuff can be a little expensive um, and you don't wanna just blow it out and destroy it right off the bat, that's no good. Issue number four, the final issue is just plan your array out before you start. So I'm sort of the get going and make mistakes as I go type person, which is good in some respects, but in irrigation might not be the best. If I was smarter, what I would have done is I would have said, okay, where are my sprinkler heads in the yard? Which one of those am I gonna use? And which am I not gonna use? Which do I need to cap? Which am I gonna retrofit? Uh, and of the ones I'm gonna retrofit, where's the mainline tubing gonna run? Where is the, um, where am I coming out of that main line to get into a raised bed, to get into an in-ground bed? Am I using drip tape or am I using drip line? Uh, how many pieces do I need? And so I would just sketch it out. I mean, this is simple, basic advice that if you're someone who's doing it for the first time, uh, this could be really helpful. I should have done it, I didn't do it. That is something that I would highly recommend. Okay, so that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. I know I'm kind of a beginner when it comes to drip, but I figured I'd show you my journey. Uh, and I think I rigged up a pretty cool system. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six beds on drip, soon to be seven. Uh, and this mound here, which I'm gonna do potatoes in, I may put on drip tape as well, we'll see. Um, and so an entire front yard irrigated with the turn of a nozzle. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could put that on a timer, just haven't done it yet. Not too bad for first try, I would say. This, I consider this all practice for the future, which for me, I, I would like to believe is a high tech homestead. So what I wanna try to figure out is how do you blend modern living, the living that average Americans are used to, um, with a production-based lifestyle. So you're actually producing most of your food instead of consuming it from other sources. You're producing most of your own fertility, uh, maybe even your own eggs, your own chickens, uh, your own fish, if you're gonna do some aquaculture or aquaponics, but without sacrificing the creature comforts that we've come to know and love just due to the modern times that we live in. Um, and so all this type of stuff, how to the, install the drip, how to grow hydroponics, how to clone basil, um, how to set up an aquaponic system, how do you have never ending microgreens? All this stuff is in service of that 
end goal. Um, so thank you so much to everyone who watches these videos, to everyone who joins me on the journey. Uh, share your journey. I drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're, you've been up to. Let me know what suggestions you have. Um, and I would be happy, happy, happy to talk to you all. Because I love answering these questions. It's so cool. I get a little notification. Uh, and then I get to talk to someone who's spending time watching these videos. So very cool. And until next time, everyone, good luck in the garden and keep growing. Thank you.